Um, so I would now like to introduce uh, Sam, Samantha Jones, um, who's the project officer for the Oswestry High Street Heritage Ac Action Zone. Um, and she's going to take a very practical look at the advantages of heritage led regeneration as part of the um, programme of High Street Action Zones, which uh, Historic England runs uh, across across England. Um, Smart Sam did her um, archaeology degree at Trinity College here in Carmarthen, but is is now living and working in Oswestry Street just over the border. So thank you, Sam, and uh, take it away. Brilliant. Can we see that? Brilliant. Yes, thank you. We Brilliant. See, Thanks yeah. very much. I just like to check before I, uh, <laughs> I, I start going on. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks very much for inviting me along, Nell. As you say, um, 25 odd years ago, I came down to Carmarthen and spent three years there. And it was really lovely to see that video at the beginning um, and see, you know, how things have changed, but equally how things are still the same. And I think that's kind of the fundamental thing, really, that our high streets are constantly evolving and yet they have their roots firmly set in the past. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of our speakers this morning have reiterated, reiterated that, really. So, yeah, so we've been doing a um, historic led regeneration scheme in Oswestry now for, for two years um, and we've got 18 months left to go. So we're kind of at a good point to kind of assess our sort of um, sort of strengths and challenges that that go on through doing such a scheme. So we'll share some of those with you. Um, so for those of you who've never been to Oswestry, we're right on the, the border up in sort of um, northeast Wales. So sort of located between sort of Wrexham, Chester, Shrewsbury, Llangollen, that kind of area. And we're a town that's very similar to Carmarthen in size. So we're, we're sort of around 18,000. Um, it's a market town, so we have a market three days a week, um, both inside and outside. Um, and a few years ago in 2018, it was recognised really that um, there needed to be an injection of, of funding into the town centre to address a lot of the things that we've been talking about. So um, vacancy rates um, on shop floors, but equally on upper floors. Um, and also um, the fact that, um, you know, how we use our town centres have changed and our um, sort of buying habits have changed as well. Um, so we initially um, put in an application for a um, heritage action zone funding in 2018, which we were unsuccessful with. Um, and one of the reasons for that was that it didn't, they didn't feel, historically they didn't feel that our partnership working was strong enough. And I think that was probably one of the um, great things that came out of that application. So as a result, we set up the Future Oswestry Group. And that is a group that is um, made up of members of Shropshire Council, Oswestry Town Council and the Oswestry Business Improvement District. So the bid. And it goes back to kind of what Ian said at the start about having that that buy-in from all of the key stakeholders within the town centre um, and I think that has been our um, ultimate success I think we all work um, to to basically bring um, you know Oswestry back up um, and, and a good place to to live and work and visit um, we then applied for a high street heritage action zone in um, 2019 and we were successful so the project should have started in April 2020, but unfortunately a pandemic happened, which meant that there was a six month hiatus. So the project didn't actually get underway until uh, October 2020. Um, and we are one of 67 schemes throughout the country and we are about a two million pound project. So we're actually quite small in comparison to many other towns. Um, across the country and we have funding from Historic England, Oswestry Town Council and Shropshire Council and really um, I, I suppose the, the scheme came about because um, one the Mary Porter's report which said that our town centres were changing 
um, town centres very much used to be um, places that people gathered. Um, for example, with the market town, Wednesday would be, you know, so busy because all of the farmers and everything and their wives and the surrounding villages and towns would come to sell their um, animals. They would visit the market. They would catch up with friends. They would visit the pubs, all of those kind of things. And shopping kind of changed um, kind of how Ben said, really, it became car dominant and we had lots of out of town retail units setting up. And I think one massive positive of COVID is that we've kind of re we've kind of fallen back in love with our town centres in a way. We've kind of had to be forced to go and see what we could buy locally because we couldn't travel. And I think we've kind of um, discovered all of those wonderful things that that the town has. Um, and and so we've got, you know, the house scheme going on now, which is which has been really successful. Um, and it's now part of kind of really that leveling up um, scheme that that that's we kind of hear probably quite daily. Um, so. What we've kind of done in the town centre is we have a um, capital grant scheme um, and we have two strands to this. So one is our repurposing grant um, and we have an intervention rate of 60 percent and we have a cap on our um, grant schemes as well. So with repurposing, it's 25,000 and with shop fronts, it's 12,000. We are the lowest intervention rate of all of the schemes again. Uh, most are 90-95% um, and they don't have a, a cap either so um, they're looking at really large projects. We've been really successful in our grants. Um, we currently have 13 schemes um, and we've committed uh, around £300,000 um, and what we have done as a result is then because we we are targeting more properties rather than just doing a couple of big projects i think accumulatively we have a much greater um kind of accumulative effect in the town center um and therefore we've noticed a lot of uh, much more beneficial work that's gone on um so this is 20 church street um church street within Ossestry, um is is one of the main high streets, um, primarily um, in good condition, apart from 20 Church Street. And I think when you have one truly appalling high street um, shop front as we do there, um, it brings the whole of that street down. Um, this is a listed building, grade two listed, um, and the, the um, previous um, owner of the building um, decided to rip out the shop front and all of the um, internal walls on the ground floor um, and then basically did a runner um, and so it lay empty for a little while and it went up for auction and um, a local couple that already lived within the within the town decided to sell their property and purchase this property they um, wanted to do the right thing for the building and it goes back I suppose a bit to kind of what Helen was talking about um, when you're looking at sort of significance and stuff like that but I think when you've got an owner as well that that you know has fallen in love with the building then that makes things um, much easier in terms of of kind of doing the work um, so just a couple of quick internal shots um, so they lived for about uh, three four years with um, you know very little inside um, as you can see there, one of the steel um, columns that had to be made to ensure that the upper floors did not fall down. Um, no shot front, lots of gaps there. It must have been freezing upstairs. Um, and again, you can see it was just completely stripped back um, to nothing inside. We were able to, to award them a grant um, and they've now um, fitted that out. They've made it DDA compliant, so um, it has ramped access um, and everything inside. It's currently um, nearing completion in terms of, of kind of um, being let. Um, so then the final fit will occur um, from that. Um, but externally, you can see that that it's had quite a dramatic effect. Um, and this was quite, in a way, quite simple interventions. So um, just refurbishing the windows, um, replacing the lead work, a bit of paint work and decluttering. That's another thing that um, that can have quite beneficial effect is is getting rid of old um, old wires and things like that from from things that have changed over time. 
And then um, we were able to work on the shop front. We're really lucky in Oswestry that we've got 1960s images of all the shop fronts. So um, most of them are before kind of radical changes happen within the town centre. Um, and initially they came in, they had planning permission for a very generic shop front because there was no, um, uh, you know, shop front left. Um, but we were able to, to um, work with them to redesign the shop front. Um, and come up with a design that that reflected what was there before. Um, and through working with them and the conservation team, I sit within the conservation team, we were able to give them all of that advice free of charge. So that's kind of one of the ways in which you can really help to get a good design um, that, you know, um, brings, well, adds to that that area. Oswestry is a conservation area as well, just to, to bring that. Um, another one that we have is um, Blackgate. Um, so this was again a long term empty historic property. Um, it's grade two listed again. Um, it's part of an ex pub, the Smithfield um, pub, which you can see on your right there um, with the brick um, facade there. We've got um, we had bits of, you know, um, a bar in there and bits of old sort of seating from the pub and everything like that going on inside. Um, but we were able to work with um, this mother and son group who um, had worked kind of in the industrial estate and they were looking to um, bring a tea room back into the town centre. Um, and it was quite, it's quite um it's quite a kudos thing for the town centre, really. Um, Adam Cleal, who is the baker there, was a semi-finalist in the Bake Off the Professionals. So it was really great to 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 welcome a high end um, business into the town centre as well. Um, so on the left, you can see kind of how it was once kind of all of the sort of bar paraphernalia had had gone. We were able to. Um, uh, pay for all of the sort of kitchen fit out really so all of the hygiene walling of flooring that that was required and and stuff like that to to bring them in um also bringing services up to to standard so you know uh, rewiring plumbing and things like that so that we reduce the risk of any fire um going on um and as you can see um it's an open sort of um catering area all the way through to the kitchen so you can see adam and his team working and then this is the other side of the building um, and obviously with the fitted units there. So everything is is um, freestanding. Nothing is mounted, um, obviously, to the walls and things like that. And they are um, there for 10 years. So, you know, they're there for the long term and, are pre you know, doing really successfully, um, which is fantastic. And then one Beatrice Street is just another one. This one is a non-designated heritage asset, but it brings um, so much to the conservation area. And it goes back to what Helen says about significance. Um, this one was a hard fought battle with Historic England. It took us a year to get this one um, through the system. Um, so um, that was a, a challenge, shall we say. Um, but we fought very hard because um, Historic England were very um, concerned about the um, redevelopment of the upstairs and the potential um, modifications that had to be made um, through building regs, um, particularly after um, Grenfell um, and the possibility of it um, taking away some of that historic um, significance. However, obviously, we we fought very hardly for this one because um, to us, the significance of the property is its external facade and what it contributes to the conservation area. As you can see, it had a very attractive uh, aluminium shop front, um, which was which was, you know, leaking um, and beyond repair. Upstairs was vacant. Um, and and yeah, we really some, you know, a couple of internal pictures wasn't really anything much of merit in there. Um, and what we what they've been able to produce is a very, again, high end quality product. Um, which again is an is an apartment, and I think something that hasn't been mentioned yet that is really significant is is that the best thing for any historic building is to have people living in it. It's people opening the windows, putting the heating on, um, all of those things that that happens in a in a building on a day to day basis. Um, you know, there is nothing worse than a you know an empty upper floor, as as Helen alluded to, really. 
um you know just kind of you know being left to rack and ruin um it, it just causes such long-term issues so that's now led to four uh young um professionals so we've got people in the town that then leads on to ben's comments really about having people in the town center using the facilities in the town um and also goes back to that pride of place um from the first um speaker that we had you know by having people in there looking at the place they they become um, more protective of the place in which they live. They want to live in, in, in somewhere nice. Um, and then just to go to the front and to realise kind of why um, the building interior was, was, was quite bland is that, you know, it was a form of butchers um, and, and typically of butchers, uh, you know, the money is put on the shop front um, out of doors, really, um, not on in the interior. However, um, one sort of cautionary note I suppose whenever you're doing any redevelopment scheme is that you know we have to sort of um, be careful not to create a pastiche of what was what was there in, in, in terms of like taking a snapshot of a of a, a high street at a certain time and trying to recreate that um, you know as I said our, con our high streets are constantly evolving and constantly changing and our, our shopping habits have changed as well this shop will never be a butcher's again and therefore um, we needed to you know have some degree of flexibility about what we restored and put back there I suppose um, to reflect those 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 habits that we have today um, the shop is currently a consortium of local kind of craftspeople's um, wares really so it requires a big shop front to display it needs a shop front rather than you know um, a much uh, uh, smaller um, windows and things like that so this is the shop front that we've put in it has elements of the original shop front there um, but what it's created is is a, a, a vibrant space that, as you can see, display displays what's what's on in the shop, draws people in through the door, um, and that's what what we need to to be doing. Um, 17 Cross Street is is something that's undergoing radical change at the moment. So this is how we can help other people as well. It's not just about businesses um, and things like that. Designs in Mind is a community interest company that. You, um, works with adults with mental health issues. Um, they currently occupy the top two floors. Um, however, there are issues um, in terms of disability access. You have to go down a, a very narrow um, passageway on that left-hand side, turn in a 90 degrees and then another 90 degree to get into a very small um, lift to get upstairs. So they were really looking at how can they make their... Um, offer to those people easier more accessible but equally how could they promote themselves and to break down the stigma that is attached with mental health issues um so in this case um we've um funded them to uh repurpose the downstairs but we've 100 percent funded um this this shop front um so that's a match of historic england and and, and nosley town council money um we don't have any um historic images of this shop front sadly the street was really narrow so it made um sort of historic victorian um um images uh, really difficult and by the 1960s we had that horrible um shop front that that we had before that was eating up so much of the internal space. So what we've done again with the conservation officer and, and, and with their architect is to look at um, similar buildings. So you can just see um, uh, Bernardo's on the right hand side. We've taken that design there and replicated it on the um, pilasters there. Um, we've got a nice interned um, doorway now and the, the face here, sadly, is that has to be that deep due, due to um, the steel work and stuff that, that that's there. But it's a 100 percent improvement on what was there internally. Um, sorry, not internally um, before. And I think what's been really interesting is to see the change that's happening with the town centre. So this is Coral a few doors up that has actually um, started to paint their shop front and do repairs to their fascia um, that they're doing this off their own back so it's kind of nice to see this is what you always want with a project to to carry out some intervention work which then has um, you know other uh, a cumulative effect going on with people up in their game to to realize that they have to bring their their shops to a better standard 
Um, and then what we've done um, in vacant shops, um, Oswald Street has a very low um, vacancy rate. We've only probably got about half a dozen shops vacant within the town centre. Um, but instead of um, seeing it as a vacant shop, what we've done is a very cheap intervention rate. So for a few hundred pounds, we've got some interpretation um, vinyls on, on the shop front. It means that people don't see it as a vacant shop as they're walking past. Um, and then it's quick and easy for the new owners whenever they do come in just to rip that off um, once they're ready to open. And then really just the other big thing that we've done as part of the project is the um, is our public ground project and here we concentrated on alleyways. Um, so we've heard on a couple of other talks about kind of how these these old linkages points are kind of really key. Um, this is Herbie Roberts way. As you can see, it's really poor. It's um, the paving is is not. Um, to the grade that needs to be to, to take vehicular access. There's a, a very small um, car park for businesses um, on that right hand side by the red wheelie bin. Um, and then further up, we've got businesses as well. Um, we've got a cafe, nail bar and things like that. So um, quite often people would either walk past these, they don't realise they can walk up, they might think that it's just for a car park and things like that. So we really wanted to um, upgrade these and make them destination places in, their, in you know, themselves. So what we've done is, is upgraded um, things like the paving there. So we've taken up the, the sort of degraded um, uh, uh, tarmac and then we've replaced it with um, some high quality paving there. As you can see, um, we've done the same thing down um, on that lower section. And what we've been able to do is to work with um, businesses who've been really supportive. So um, with the works here, we've we've moved the wall back, um, which means that now you have a much better vista going up. You can see that there's businesses. It looks much more inviting and welcoming. Um, we've put planters. Um, we're now seeing that actually the community are adding planters um, as well in other areas and putting plants in the planters as well. So it's really um, nice to see that they're adopting um, uh, things as well. And we're creating um, uh, art, you know, sort of um, destination points, I suppose. So at each sort of entrance way to the alleyways, there will be something that that sort of um, announces that you are somewhere. And, and at this point, we're going to have a clock which has um, iconography of St Oswald um, on it. Um, Kyglas Park was an alleyway. So on the left hand side of the image there, that's um, a grade two listed pub. Um, on the right hand side, not so nice pub, um, a weather spoons. Um, but this was a link through to, to the park. Um, and we do a lot of consultations part of our project. And something that came out quite a lot was that people didn't know that they could walk that way down um, to the park. And, you know, things like the benches, they said, well, you know, I wouldn't want to sit here and and while away the time. It's, you know, it's 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 not a nice place to stop. Um, so what we've done is radically transformed that alleyway and created, um, pulled the park down into the town centre and created a real um, welcome through. So we've got wisteria and ivy there that will climb up over that archway and we'll hide a lot, hopefully, of that Weatherspoons um, architecture there. Um, we've repainted and stuff the the um, the pub and instead we've created a really vibrant place that actually people now want to sit and um, look at. And then I can't remember whose talk it was, but somebody mentioned about kind of naming and kind of um, bringing back um, those things that are forgotten. So one of the alleyways that we've worked on is, is Star Passage. This alleyway did not have a name before. It was totally lost. Um, but what we've been able to do with a group of volunteers who are working through um, archive records for us was find that it was actually called um, Star Passage um, historically. And that was because of the Star Inn pub that used to be um, at one end. Um, and I think it's really important about putting, you know, those names back in and telling people about those names. So we have these small interpretation panels um, that tell people uh, just a, you know, very small snippet of, of, you know, history and making those connections again. And that's kind of it, really. Um, an Ozestry and a whistle stop tour. But Diolch um, am um, So thank you for listening. And uh, I don't know now if we've got any time for questions or if we're leaving them to the end.